In this video, we're going to briefly introduce the idea of the limit theorem. This is a much more practical way for identifying how do two functions compare. In the previous examples, I told you, show me that this satisfies a definition. All you needed to do was find the constants that we claimed existed. So once you found C and N naught, you were done with those problems. In practice, those constants and that N naught are wholly irrelevant. All we really care is what thing grows faster or slower. Limits are great at capturing that. In fact, if you learned the Hopital's rule in calculus, you probably were like, why on the earth are we not doing that here? So we can formalize that idea by writing down three different limits and saying, what do they tell us? If you have two functions and divide them, that's what we have here. We have F and G, and we're looking at the limit as you divide them. If that limit goes to zero, that means the bottom is bigger than the top, which we write in our big O notation. The top is smaller than the bottom. Conversely, if that limit gave us infinity, that's that the top would be bigger than the bottom, which again, we write in our omega notation. The first thing saying that f of n is less than or equal to g of n, math seems to check out. The second one saying that f of n is bigger than g of n, again, math seems to check out. And then the third option, we have zero infinity and then literally any number, a positive number it turns out, which should always work because we assume these functions are non-negative. Any non-zero positive number says that they're in theta of each other, that they grow up to the same rate, and that the only real difference is some constant out front. This way of categorizing limits turns out to be very helpful for identifying some rules of thumb. Does n squared grow faster than n cubed? Does n cubed grow faster than n squared? How do you determine that? This gives us a very quick way of determining that without needing to think too hard about it or using induction to prove it. This is a very powerful technique, and we'll use it to demonstrate lots of rules that we will use in the future.